Hello and welcome to Unbox the Podcast, the podcast that helps you live your best life. I'm your host, Sahar Hunaydi Palmer. Unbox Coffee Break started in the lockdown of 2020. What developed was a true sense of community, virtual community, and I found a new way to support my friends, followers, and those who needed help. Welcome to Coffee Break. I want to thank you all for coming back, popping in to have coffee and, well, tea. <laughs> After the dinner, I think it's tea now in Ramadan. I'm finding coffee too heavy. And I want to thank you, um, thank all the coffee breakers. A lot of you came back, sent direct messages and left comment how you were touched by yesterday's coffee break. Well, I was touched. It was an emotional day as I named it Freedom Day to be able to move, to see loved ones, to see friends, to see family, relatives. It was really amazing. It was such a wonderful day although it didn't go as I planned for it to go, but I felt really blessed and fortunate. And that was really um, a wonderful thing to have, to feel really <sighs> liberated. You could really breathe in. It was amazing. And the previous few days were really, really warm. So I couldn't even go out in the garden. And to be able to go out yesterday and enjoy it was really wonderful. And I noticed that the garden had more colors, more plants are flowering, trees that haven't flowered for like a year, they're flowering now. So I took it all as a good omen. And the other nice thing is, you know, some coffee breakers whom I really don't know, we've just met now on Instagram, send me lots of wonderful pictures and gave me feedback as to what they're doing and how they're digitally detoxing their lives. And I heard from a very old client who sent a wonderful message saying how she now listened to a recommendation that came up in her session, which is to start something creative. And she started her blog about travel and she sent it to me, which was really nice. I heard from another client that she said even 20 years ago, I had mentioned that she was creative and she said, no, I'm not. And I said, yes, I see photography. And now she, all she deals with is you know photography film production things like that so you never know how your life will go and i think if we spend too much time worrying about the future that inevitably means that we have less time to do things in order to move forward to that future and some of my friends are really paranoid they keep sending me these messages um you know whatever conspiracy theories what's happening and, and i really stopped watching um, you get a lot of information and I've been feeling from my tribe, you know, all the coaches and mentors that I know, I've been looking at their posts last night and we kind of seem to be on the same vibe. You know, we're feeling it, things are changing and you need to think about the future now and how to restart it and reshape it rather than worry about, you know, what's going to happen with COVID. In fact, one of my um, friends and colleagues Coach Taimur said, you're so much worried about sanitizing everything. Why don't you sanitize your mind? <laughs> you know, be more discerning as to what you take in. But the other thing that I noticed, you know, with all these pictures that you've sent, they're like of trees, of flowers, um, especially wisteria. I got pictures of wisteria from, you know, several people who are not connected and don't know each other. And I absolutely love wisteria. Um, it's one of my favorite, I don't know what to call it, plants, trees, climbers, flowers. Uh, maybe because of its delicate, you know, lilac color, lavender color. I don't know. It takes years to grow. And with time, it looks even more wonderful. Nature has always inspired me. And I think when you grow something, it is growing against all the odds, isn't it? It's the nature of things to grow. <laughs> Sooner or later, they will grow. <laughs> And that was really uplifting. And I used to look at pictures of interior design and, you know, landscaping before, but now I noticed I'm looking at more pictures of nature outdoors. And I think from the response to the coffee break yesterday, what really touched me is people are not only trying to connect, but they're trying to connect in a tangible way, you know, with all the senses. They send me pictures of what they're cooking. Someone asked me, why aren't you cooking anymore? 
I think a couple of weeks ago, um, I got really excited and I was in the kitchen every day. I felt nostalgic, you know, to the old food, the old traditional recipes, things that my mother used to cook. And I think I just missed that. So I promise I will go back to that. And um, what I also noticed in Ramadan, because everyone kind of, usually you'd have a big meal, um, although you're meant to experience the opposite. This Ramadan, people are really, really aware that the world is changing. Everyone has been, I'm not sure conservative is the right word, but everyone has been really minimal with their food, you know, focusing on what they truly need um, rather than having, you know, a big binge which is really interesting. A lot of um, people are cooking, again, the old recipes, traditional food at home. And one of the things that I really miss is a taif, which is very similar to pancakes, except we fold them over and we stuff them with white cheese that kind of stretches like mozzarella, but not quite, um, or nuts with coconut and um, raisins. And that's, you know, when you think Ramadan, you think of all the traditional food and drinks and juices. So it was interesting that, you know, again, two, three people sent me their own recipes, different recipes. Everyone is doing that at home. And I think that's what we miss, the connection, the family, the memories. But also with the sensations of smell, taste, seeing things, you know, not just connecting over the, over the internet. So... For me, it's moving a step in the right direction. It was such an emotional day that I felt really um, not tired, but heavy. Like my body didn't want to move. My body didn't want to do anything um, until now. <laughs> so I got up, I got dressed and I thought, no, I'll, I'll do the coffee break. And I wanted to have a traditional abaya to show you, to show my friends abroad what it is. I couldn't find it. But I found this old scarf that I used to sell on my store that has traditional um, calligraphy. And I thought it would be a prayer or something spiritual, but it's not. It's a love poem. So there we are about people falling in love and forgetting to sleep. <laughs> but I love blue. I've put it on. And um, I'll try and share some of the things that you may not know about that are quite traditional in this month. Family gatherings, not so more, not so much at a scale, again, because everyone is being careful and cautious. But a friend passed by yesterday, I mean, a really close friend, and I don't know what we were talking about. Um, and then suddenly we started moving furniture around, and I thought, why not? Although I resisted moving that furniture around, it, some of it was furniture pieces that you know my, my husband, my late husband and I had. And I think I was emotionally attached to them, not logically. <laughs> um, and I couldn't let go of them. And then finally yesterday I felt, well, if this arrangement works better, you know, then, then why not? And um, I felt I was ready, basically. I was ready to let go of the sadness, I think, that these um, pieces of furniture stood for, probably. So anyway, we moved the furniture around and then suddenly I thought, well, I, I do miss my family. I have an extensive family. Today, or I had, the shrinking. Today was the birthday of another aunt of mine in Jordan who's in lockdown. So there was absolutely no way of celebrating. She's an older woman, so no chance of getting her to go on Zoom. But all of us cousins and her daughter made an effort to celebrate with her. And what really touched me is that her daughter went all the way out because she's in a homestay in Portugal. So there's no way they could see each other or be with each other. So her daughter, my cousin Mona, went and baked a cake for her and decorated it and put it somewhere really lovely and sunny in the garden next to gorgeous flowers. And she sang happy birthday with her to, to her. And then all the cousins, you know, we just taped something, recorded something or called her. And she was really touched and I guess what I'm trying to say is now maybe people who are aware are making more, more of an effort to connect to let loved ones and friends know that they're loved and the other things that I noticed hey guys thank you for joining 
is before, well, at least in the family, if you told someone I love you, they'd say thank you. But now, you know, when I tell my aunts or something, you know, I love you, everyone answers back, and I love you too, which is really amazing. So here, something is opening up. And if you're willing, you will feel that kind of heart-centered, I don't know, communication, honesty, truth. And I think when you speak the truth, it either resonates or it doesn't. But if the other party is open, then it resonates. And if they're not, then it's okay. Don't make it your issue. And today, I felt really heavy, as I said. My body didn't want to move, didn't want to do anything. And I thought maybe there's something wrong with me. And it wasn't until kind of like two, three hours ago that I haven't heard from my close friends. And then they started texting and saying that they've been feeling really heavy. It's an odd day. Some of them feel really anxious, bordering on angry. It's probably frustration. And I thought, to an extent, we must all be feeling that way because things are different. And I don't mean COVID, but the whole, you know, planet, planetemic that we're going through. And I think the anxiety must be about, well, what, what are we going to return to? What is going to be the new norm? And although we don't know, I personally feel quite, quite excited about it. Um, I was texting my niece yesterday, one of my nieces in England, and she said, it's surprising how little we need and it's surprising what our essential needs are. You know, go for a walk, um, see a tree, you know, walk by the river, drink good water, you know, eat essential food. And I hope we don't forget that when we come out of COVID. In Dubai, this is probably an experiment now that, you know, lockdown has been eased a bit. And, um, well, a silly thing happened. People lined up to go to a certain restaurant here in Dubai. And it was amazing how popular it was that there was a huge, huge line with people standing close and next to each other that eventually that restaurant had to be shut down. And, you know, you felt like telling them, well, you know, hello, don't you know, we still have the virus. Just because you're able to walk out doesn't mean you can forget about the restrictions. So what has happened? They denied themselves and others of that small pleasure that we can actually go out and go to a restaurant. And it just made me wonder, I think there will always be people who don't learn. There will always be, I don't know whether a majority or a minority of people um, who don't learn from the experiences that they go through. And I don't know what you're gonna do about that, but I know that we can each focus on our own reality, focus on what we can do and I think if we take it, um, hey, Kudumis, and if we take it day by day without worrying too much about the future, we might have enough energy to actually think about what is it that we're trying to create and what kind of future do we want to live towards. One of the things that has really helped <laughs> was food. <laughs> And I don't mean just comfort to food. Today was comfort food. Today was um, macaroni and cheese with mushrooms, which I haven't had for years. And it was totally comfort food. But what has really helped in the last month or two is the, you know, little vegetables and herbs that we were growing. Um, and I hadn't noticed until today I walked and checked the garden and, you know, certain things the season are over the cherry tomatoes, the tomatoes, the peppers, the season is definitely over. And I thought, wow, you know, that really kind of sustained us and we enjoyed it. And I think one of the things that I will plan um, to take more seriously is to grow edible vegetables and herbs. I mean, I used to do it as a hobby, um, but I think I will take it more seriously because there's nothing better than eating from your own garden, however small or, or large it is. Because even in London, we lived in a small flat and we still had a lot of pots in that dinky one meter by one meter, one meter, one square meter. We had lots of pots and lots of herbs and things that we grew, which we really enjoyed. 
and thinking of food and the sensations of food, I, I think that's partly pleasure that we miss in isolation. You know, that just pure pleasure of food, isn't it? It's memories that you make with people you like and you go on and you have those, you know, sensations and the different flavors. And you take such small things for granted. But the point is to be grateful. You know, whatever you miss, be grateful for it. Make a note of it to remind yourself that this is what you appreciated about this time. But I am certain that it will be behind us. And I'm certain that there will be a different future. And I'm working towards a different and a better future. I realize that there's a lot of uncertainty um, out there. Which is why I think I'm going to, you know, offer my, my clients, if they wanted any guidance, nobody is in the mood of being lectured to or having, you know, the mentoring that they normally do. And don't get stuck. My point is don't get stuck. If you need help, if you need guidance, ask for it. Because time, time is your life. And I just feel as you get older time seems to run faster. Do you feel that way? It's like I have a different perception of time and um, I want to make the most of it. So when I told a friend, you know, I just, my body couldn't move today. I just let it be. Um, She said, well, you've been working really hard. I said, yeah, but you know, time is moving fast. And then there are other days where time is going really, really slow. So I think I've learned to do what I can in the time when things are flowing. And when they're not, um, like my friend and coach Natalie said, just sit with it. So that was a good reminder to see her IGTV yesterday. So I just sat with it and it's absolutely fine. Let the day go by, so what? You know, who's putting deadlines? Um, Who's limiting you by any deadlines? But choose, sanitize your mind, choose what you wanna think, think about what you can stop doing, you know, detox from what you don't need um, digitally. I'm starting digitally. I've had enough a few months ago. I had a huge clear out. I'm still not done, but, you know, yesterday was another day of shifting and moving things around. But at least I have my family around me. Let me show you. I just, you know, came up with this idea and I put all their pictures here because I miss them. So when I'm sitting in the living room, They're just in front of me and they're joining me for Ramadan, which is for me what Ramadan is about. That closeness, that intimacy, whether it's family or spiritually. Um, And that is why I'm really touched with all the messages that you've sent. Thank you. You've helped me a lot. And if I can help you in any way, let me know. Join my newsletter. It's coming out soon. And if you need guidance, It'll be there for you. Take care, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.